Okay everyone, what I have here is my Dell PowerEdge R510. I have migrated my Plex server into this server. It was given to me by my father and I am very happy to have it. It was um, an old development machine that was retired from his office and he had no longer use for it so he decided to give it to me. So after wiping all the data off of it, I installed Debian and made it a Plex Media server. It originally came with the four drives you see in the center here. They are um, 300 gigabytes and they're configured in a RAID 10 configuration. So that would give us 900 gigabytes of space. And um, to add space to it, I've increased the storage capacity by adding a one terabyte here, a one terabyte here, and those are Western Digital Black drives. And these are four terabytes and four terabytes. And those are Western Digital Reds. And they are running um, in RAID 1. So the two black drives are in a RAID 1 configuration and the two red drives are in a RAID 1 configuration. One thing about this server is it does not recognize greater than two terabytes of hard drive space. So I have ordered a new RAID controller on Amazon and it's going to give me the ability to recognize larger hard drive spaces so I can recognize the four terabytes as opposed to what it does now is it recognizes the four terabyte drives as two terabytes that is the max for the perk 6 controller that's currently in here one modification I did to this server was I had to make room for a graphics card I wanted to have a graphics card in here to be able to do hardware transcoding for Plex but the problem was that the card does not fit in the slot. And what I had to do was take a power drill and drill out the back plastic of the PCIe slot to make room for the PCI card. There is a, a video I'll link in the description about what was done to do that and how, it, how to do that. So I wouldn't recommend doing that if you don't really have steady hands or know what you're doing. But I was able to accomplish this without breaking the PCIe slot. So that's my Dell PowerEdge server and let's jump into the SSH terminal and let's look at some of the hardware and software that's running on this server. Okay, so now that I'm in my computer here, this is the Mac that I'm running and I could just SSH into the server and that's because I configured SSH and let's just do SSH and my name. And I call it airplane.local. So basically, I'm not going to get into the whole major configuration of Plex and everything like that. Other people have done those videos. I just wanted to show you my installation setup. It's Debian. And if I show you my hard drive setup, I've got an LVM configured. So the LVM is running on the RAID disks. And the RAID disks are seen as single disks in the operating system. So um, it's really no problem to run LVM. LVM is great for dynamically adding and removing space inside your storage capacity. And as you can see, the data, you know, we're maxing out at a couple terabytes here, and that's because I have not installed the new RAID controller yet. So I'm looking forward to doing that and grabbing a couple more terabytes out of space. So under LSPCI, I have... Um, some PCI Express cards. I have my, it's a Intel Core Xeon 5500 Core i7. And I believe there's two CPUs altogether. Those are physical CPUs. And I believe there's, I think altogether, eight cores. Uh, let me see, cat proc CPU info. All right, so yeah, I have, scroll up here uh yep there is processor zero and this is the information about the cpu and these are the different cores that's processor one two three four all the way up until so oh okay i have 15 cores not just eight um so i think that's eight per cpu And if I do proc meminfo, 
you'll see that I have total memory 24 tera uh, 24 gigabytes of space. So that's not bad. Okay, so the graphics card information is displayed here, and actually it's not a P2000, it's a Quadro K2000. It's probably a lot older than the newer models. But it's working pretty well for transcoding, and it does the job for me. I only run one video at a time typically, so um, it's not really too big of a deal. <clears throat> and all is well. So. Uh, to install Plex, what I did was um, go to Plex Media Server Download. And <clears throat> really, when you go to download the server, you just choose Linux. And for me, for being Debian, I just chose Debian 64 bit. When I right mouse click on it, I get the copy link. So then I just go to here and go wget download the file and then you could just do dpkg-i and then that file. So it just basically updates the existing installation. So up here you can see it's <clears throat> installed. It's got hardware encoding right there, NVIDIA GPU card. Um, and this is the metadata directory. I also have on order an SSD enclosure for the DVD tray for my server. So right now I'm not running my application support directory for Plex on an SSD, but it's gonna run a lot faster when I do configure that. I just need an extra hard drive enclosure for my server. So basically when I can install the SSD, I will, and that will be used for this directory. So what I'll do is I will copy everything to that disk and mount it at this location rather than just going straight to the spinning hard drives and it will run a lot faster. So so everyone, that's my Plex setup. That is my hardware and everything. If this is not a tutorial on how to configure Plex. There's other videos out there such as the one from Bite My Bits. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, other than that, I just wanted to share with you my hardware and my setup and everything that I have running here. So I'm just pretty proud of this setup. It works very well. I purchased the Plex Pass for, I believe, $6 a month, and that just gets me access anywhere that has internet or uh, even 3G on my phone. I can access my Plex server from anywhere. So uh, that's what Plex Pass will give you. If you don't have the Plex Pass, you can run the, the media server, but it will only be available within your home, I believe is the limitation. So uh, yeah, so stay tuned for more videos. If you like this video, please uh, click the like button. And if you want more audio and technology content such as this, please click the subscribe.